hello guys welcome back to my channel so let's start with today's topic that is ion channel receptors and enzyme linked receptor starting with the ion channel receptors usually in the cell there can be three types of receptors in the first type of ion channels it can be operated by the binding of the ligand once ligand come and bind to these ion channels they alter their property and they activates them and show their response in second type they can open or close by any type of voltage at a particular voltage so this is why these channels are known as the voltage gated ion channel and the third type are the mechanical pressure uh, uh, regulated ion channels so this is known as the mechanical gated ion channels so the three types of ion channels are the ligand gated ion channel voltage gated ion channel and mechanical gated ion channel let's see more about the ligand gated ion channels so in case of the ligand gated ion channels the ligand can be neurotransmitters it can be hormone or any other chemical substances so let's discuss about this ligand gated ion channel here we can see here is a neuron and here is the other neuron now this neuron can put some influence upon this neuron by releasing a neurotransmitter let's say this neuron is producing a neurotransmitter which is going to act upon this neuron now what will happen is if this ion channel that is present over this neuron will cause the influx of the positive charge or the cations inside the cell this time the cell will get more positive charge or it get, will get loaded with the cations so this cation can be sodium or calcium because we know that the concentration of sodium and calcium is more outside the cell and less inside the cell so it will come from outside to inside the cell at this position the neuron will get loaded with this cations and when they will get loaded with the cations the resting membrane potential of this neuron will move towards threshold and ultimately it will depolarize it when this neuron will get depolarized it means that it has got stimulated so this was about how a neurotransmitter can stimulate a neuron through the neurotransmitter next if we want to inhibit this neuron uh, what uh, will happen let's say this is another neuron and this neuron is producing a neurotransmitter that will act upon this ion channel where it will cause the outflux of potassium which is a cation from inside cell to outside the cell we know that the concentration of potassium is more inside the cell and less outside the cell so the cation will move from cell from the cell to outside the cell since at this time the concentration of cation inside the cell is less and the negativity is more inside the cell it will cause hyperpolarization so when this neuron is uh, going to hyperpolarize this will inhibit so these are the two situation where in first situation the neurotransmitter through this ion channel they are stimulating the neuron and in the second case this neurotransmitter they are going to inhibit the neuron there is another case how uh, the cell can the neurons can get inhibited is by the production of a neurotransmitter that will cause influx of chloride inside the cell we know chloride being an anion when they get into the cell the, uh, the cell will get more electronegative in nature that means it will get hyperpolarized and ultimately it will inactivate the neuron so this is another way how it can get activate uh, inactivated so we saw how ligand can alter the property 
of an ion channel either by stimulating or inhibiting the neuron. So basically we can classify them as excitatory transmitter gated ion channel and inhibitory transmitter gated ion channel. So let's see the first example of excitatory transmitter gated ion channel that is the nicotinic cholinergic receptor. Let's say we have a cell and a over that cell we have this particular ion channel. In this ion channel we have some grooves or space where acetylcholine will get attached. So whenever acetylcholine comes and attached to this particular ion channel the cation that is sodium and calcium will get into this ion channel and move towards the cell. And whenever this ion channel is getting activated and sodium and calcium comes into the cell at the same time potassium will also move from inside the cell to outside the cell but the ratio of sodium coming into the cell will be more than potassium going out of the cell that is the concentration of cation coming from extracellular to intracellular will be more than the concentration of cation leaving the cell through this ion channel now because acetylcholine is activating this ion channel and the positive charge is loading inside the neuron, at this time the cell will get depolarized and ultimately this uh, channel will help to stimulate the neuron which is uh, doing, done by the help of acetylcholine. Now not only acetylcholine that will get attached to this particular ion channel but also Nicotine will also be able to attach to this particular ion channel. This is why this ion channel is known as nicotinic cholinergic receptor because nicotine is also capable of binding to this ion channel and acetylcholine is also capable of getting binding to this particular channel. So this is why it is known as the nicotinic cholinergic receptor. So this ion channel have five peptides that are assembled together to form this particular ion channel. Here acetylcholine is also going to fit over this place as well as nicotine is also going to get fit into this place. So whenever a person who is smoking heavily, the person feels some excitement after they have smoked because this nicotine will come and get bind to this particular area of the ion channel and more of the cation will get into the cell and stimulate the cell for a time being. So this is what happens. This was about nicotinic cholinergic receptor that is leading to activation of this particular ion channel. Now this particular ion channel can get antagonized by these two substances that is alpha bongerotoxin and tubocurarin they do not allow acetylcholine to get attached to this particular space as a result the ion channel will not get activated and this cation will also not come into the cell that will ultimately lead to inactivation of this ion channel so we know tubocurarin is a skeletal muscle relaxant which do not allow acetylcholine to fit into this particular space in the muscle end plate. As a result, depolarization does not happen and in that particular uh, area, it gets relaxed, which is, this is how they show their uh, skeletal muscle relaxant action. This is the first example of excitatory transmitter gated ion channel. The second example is of 5 hydroxy tryptamine receptor. 5 hydroxy tryptamine receptor also leads to excitation or the stimulation of the ion channel. See, this is our neuron. We will assume that this is a particular neuron. So, whenever this neuron is producing 5 uh, hydroxy tryptamine, it will 
lead to opening of this particular ion channel and positive charge will go inside the cell as a result the cationic load of this neuron will increase it will depolarize and will get stimulated antagonist to this particular receptor is antiemetic drugs antipsychotic drugs and angiolytics now let's see about the inhibitory transmembrane gated ion channel so there are two type of inhibitory transmembrane gated ion channel the gaba and glycine both gaba and glycine are inhibitory neurotransmitter but the small difference is that gaba is inhibitory throughout the cns whereas glycine is inhibitory only in the spinal cord so let's see about gaba so whenever a neuron is releasing gaba as a neurotransmitter it is going to bind to its receptor in the ion channel that will be a gaba a receptor it can be either gaba a or gaba b but in this case it have to be gaba a receptor because we know that gaba b receptor is a gpcr receptor whereas gaba a receptor is a chloride channel receptor so this is a chloride channel receptor whenever gaba comes and binds to gaba a receptor it is going to activate this ion channel and on activation of this ion channel chloride will get into the cell chloride being anionic in nature the concentration of anion inside the neuron will increase and it will hyperpolarize the neuron after it got hyperpolarized it will get inactivated and the action will not be shown that means it will get inhibited so agonist to gaba a receptor and we have antagonist to gaba a receptor agonist to gaba a receptor means some substances that increases the action of gaba or it shows action similar to gaba the examples are benzodiazepine and barbiturate so let's discuss a bit about benzodiazepine and barbiturate how they are helping gaba a benzodiazepine when they are acting upon this gaba a receptor they increases the frequency of opening and closing of the particular channel whereas when barbiturate is acting on this ion channel it helps to uh, remain open the ion channel for longer period of time so this is a difference between working of benzodiazepine as an agonist and barbiturate as an agonist benzodiazepine helps them in the frequency of opening and closing whereas barbiturate help keeps the channel wide open for longer duration of time so in case of barbiturate poisoning it becomes bit difficult because when the channel is uh, kept open for longer duration of time more of the barbiturate will get into the cell and it will shut the neuron which can be very harmful so this was about the barbiturate and benzodiazepine how they are acting as an agonist next we have antagonist to gaba there are three usually picrotoxin bicuculin and penicillin so they help to antagonize gaba a receptor so that the chloride cannot get in and it cannot hyperpolarize and it cannot inactivate so indirectly they are trying to stimulate the neuron gaba is trying to inhibit the neuron and this antagonist they are trying to stimulate the neurons so whenever they are acting upon this neuron when they, uh, and they helps the channel to remain closed sometime it may happen that it will lead to overactivation of the neuron and can precipitate seizures also so this was about gaba as inhibitory action, uh, show action then we have glycine so the action of glycine and gaba is somewhat similar that is glycine is also acting upon the chloride ion channels and they help the chloride to get inside the cell and inhibit the cell the only difference between gaba and glycine is that 
GABA works throughout the CNS whereas glycine works as inhibitory only in the spinal cord. So this was about the inhibitory transmitter gated ion channel GABA and glycine. Next we have enzyme linked receptor. Enzyme linked receptor are also present on the cell membrane and they are single pass receptor. There are usually five types of enzyme linked receptors but starting with the receptor tyrosine kinase. So usually this type of receptors have two domains the extracellular domain and the intracellular domain. This extracellular domain is for the ligand to come and attach to this point and in intracellular domain usually there is an enzyme or it itself is an enzyme. So in this case of tyrosine kinase the in case of intracellular domain there is an enzyme that is tyrosine kinase and the extracellular domain is for the ligand. So whenever this ligand will come and attach to this extracellular domain this particular receptor will get activated. In the extra, uh, intracellular domain to this tyrosine kinase protein there are some tyrosine residues. These tyrosine residues are present in some portions of this intracellular domain. So this tyrosine kinase after getting activated what they do is they phosphorylate these residues. After this residues get phosphorylated they get uh, become the phosphorylated tyrosine residue. When the tyrosine kinase phosphorylates their own tyrosine residue, this process is known as autophosphorylation. So after autophosphorylation has occurred and this tyrosine residue have got phosphorylated, one protein will come which is having a unique units. This units are the sulfhydryl units. These sulfhydryl units are present so that they can take up this tyrosine residue that have been undergone autophosphorylation. This autophosphorylated tyrosine will attach to this sulfhydryl group and it will activate this protein. After this protein gets activated, they will in turn activate another protein which is known as SOS. This SOS is son of seven less protein. It is a type of protein. So this SOS protein will in turn activate a RAS protein. This RAS protein is a monomeric G protein. Usually G proteins are trimeric but this G protein is monomeric in nature and it has only one point where GDP is attached. So whenever this RAS protein gets activated, it will give GDP out and it will take GTP in. So whenever GTP is getting in, in this RAS protein, it will get overstimulated. So after this RAS protein gets overstimulated, it will in turn activate some rough kinase. This rough kinase will again activate MAP kinase which is a mitogen activating protein kinase. So whenever this MAP kinase will get activated, it will in turn activate some gene regulating element or it will phosphorylate some transcription factor. So after this transcriptional factor goes into the DNA, it will bind to its nucleus and it will start the process of transcription. And after it stimulates the process of transcription, mRNA will be produced. This mRNA will again carry out translation process and it will help in the formation of new proteins. So whenever the more new proteins will be formed, it will ultimately lead to the growth of the cell. So this was about the process that happens in case of receptor tyrosine kinase and ultimately leads to the growth of the cell. So the ligand that is going to bind in this extracellular domain are insulin, epidermal growth factor, vascular endothelial growth factor, fibroblast growth factor and many other different growth factors. So these are the ligand that are going to bind and it is uh, activating the 
particular receptor and the following reactions occur and lead to the growth of the cell so this was about receptor tyrosine kinase so for today up to this let's meet in the next video if this video was helpful then please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and bye